Hello and welcome to Brooks TV. I'm David Halligan. And I'm Emma Windler. Coming up this week. Disturbing scenes and trespassing, Michael investigates. In the wake of the acting the Amy trespassers, what does the future hold for student nurses? An incident occurred last week in Bangor. Will Hofborough has more. Thefts, breakings and anti-social behaviour have been reported across Oxford. Sounds like an episode of CSI, don't you think? Michael Laws has more. On Friday 3rd of February 2017, residents of Number 5 Warnford Road discovered a disturbing scene of condoms, needles and empty beer cans. Amongst this list of harmful paraphernalia, a number of other break-ins have been reported on this busy through road. These have since been reported to the council. This incident has alerted the students of Warnford Road to take drastic care of security of their property, having caught attention from residents of neighbouring Divinity Road and Southfield Road. I spoke to the occupants of the house at which the incident occurred. So basically we were in Maddie's room, which is the back bedroom in the house, and um, we looked out the window and just underneath the window was a set of pillows, some food wrappers, some lighters, some condoms, condoms alcohol bottles, needles. And needles, and a burnt patch in our grass where obviously someone had lit something or had some sort of fire or something mm. like that. Um, so as soon as we saw it, we got in contact with the council and explained to them what had happened. Um, and they agreed that someone would come and clear it safely because obviously we weren't allowed to touch it in case it was infected with anything like that. It's quite scary to think that people have just been like almost camping in our back garden. Mm. As well as trespassing and the use of illegal substances, a bicycle theft was also reported from the neighbours. Yeah, absolutely. Actually. It shook me when I first uh, discovered it, to be honest with you. Because uh, obviously where we are here, we're all tucked away neatly and you wouldn't have thought someone, someone's walked past our, all our bedroom windows to get to where the bike was. So yeah, it's made me very conscious about you know, locking up safety. Like, uh, well, the first thing I thought was check the shed and stuff after that. Because it hadn't crossed my mind that people would be back in our garden. Um, looking around in the middle of the either day or night. Are you disappointed with the fact that your bike still hasn't been found or...? No, not really. I mean, the, there's nothing the police can do about it. There's so many bikes stolen every day. But there's, uh, the chances of returning it are very low. With an average of 2,100 bicycles stolen per year, this is an issue that must be resolved. This is Michael Laws for Brooks TV News. Please do remember to stay safe, kids. Now, the government's choice to axe uh, nurse bursaries is putting a great strain on the NHS. Stephanie Windler investigates. The government's decision to axe the nurse bursaries has rattled the bones of many young nurses across the UK. With the bursary being a vital lifeline, last year hundreds of nurses and midwives joined in demonstrations across London to ask the government to rethink the plan to scrap the maintenance grant. Although the Treasury says abolishing the bursaries will allow more nurses to be trained, Already there has been a 23% drop in nurse applications this year. With existing staff shortages equivalent to approximately 50,000, it remains a grave concern as to whether the NHS will be able to cope with the insurmountable pressure. Yeah, so to have bursaries scrapped would be, I think, a big problem for a lot of people. Having spoken to people that are interested in coming into the course, there's been a massive drop in people that are coming to open days and there's no longer the incentive to, to come onto the course. Uh, the lecturers have been supportive, but I think they're also trying to remain very unbiased about it and don't want to sort of have a negative influence on us as it's you know their, their career and their path as well. Nursing has been what I've wanted to do for as long as I can remember, so I probably would have found a way, but I know that for a lot of people, um, without the bursary, they wouldn't have been able to come to university because they wouldn't be able to afford to do it. With the acts of bursaries confirmed by the government this year, we hope that this will not pose a threat on the future of the NHS and young applicants applying. I'm Stephanie Windler, reporting for Brooks TV News. 
And now a local community has been left shocked in the aftermath of a recent attack. Will Hofbauer has more. Thames Valley Police are appealing to the public for witnesses to come forward with any information regarding the robbery and assault of an 18-year-old man in Banbury, Oxfordshire. It was here, in Spikesville Park, where a man approached the victim at approximately 4pm, demanding his possessions and ultimately striking him in the face. While no major injuries were sustained, he was left bruised and shocked from the attack. PC Jonathan Livingston from the local police station has stated that this was a random attack where the victim was assaulted and was so fearful that he felt he had no choice but to hand over money. According to police statistics, 144 cases of violent crime occurred in Banbury in 2016, composing nearly 2% of the total crime in Oxfordshire. Incidents such as this can have an impact on the community at large, so I took to Spicewell Park to ask the residents of Banbury how they felt about the matter of local safety. Well, to be honest, I think it's pretty good. It's a pretty safe town. That's what I thought anyway. I walk around it every day, two or three times a day. Uh, I've got two little dogs. Uh, we appreciate the beauty of the park at all different seasons. And I hadn't even heard someone had been robbed, actually. So I feel quite sorry about that. Police are urging the public to come forward with any information they may have regarding the incident by contacting the 24-hour inquiry line on non-emergency number 101. I'm Will Hofbauer. Very scary stuff. We hope the victim has recovered from this tragic event. Meanwhile, potholes have been a major disturbance for motorists across Oxford, and it looks like they are here to stay. Potholes have become a major problem on Oxfordshire's roads. Due to the large amount of cyclists in Oxford, they are particularly dangerous and the problem shows no signs of being solved soon. Research conducted in 2016 found that 6.3 million drivers were affected by potholes in a year, with over 900,000 of the reports being in South East England. With over 2,800 miles of road in Oxfordshire, the council's budget is being stretched thin. An Oxford Council spokesperson stated in 2014 that the county would need £160 million to fix all the road problems. The Pothole Action Fund recently received £1.3 million which will go a long way to maintain the road. Uh, what do you think about the quality of the roads and do you reckon they should be improved? Well? Yeah, they're really, really bad. Quite a lot of potholes. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They should um, be wider. Yeah, they should definitely be improved. <laughs> yeah, I got a flat tyre because I went in a pothole the other day. Hitting a pothole in a car, even at slow driving speeds, could cause damage to your vehicle, including damage to your wheels and steering alignment. Higher speed incidents could cause more severe damage, or a driver could lose control of the vehicle. With no end in sight, the pothole problem may only get worse. This has been Michael Gossage reporting for Brooks TV News. Let's take a look at some of the postgraduate film students who are currently collaborating with the Ultimate Picture Palace to screen a number of highly acclaimed cult classics. Caleb Young finds out what films we'll be screening. It has always been an important role for movies to us. Every time when people connect with cinemas, the atmosphere provides stunning experience to audience. But how can cinemas give working opportunities to movie lovers an unforgettable experience not just on films, but with trainings on criticism and future career paths? Oxford Brooks University has worked with one of the local cinemas in Oxford for several years. But what is the coincidence for students in Oxford Brooks can be worked with it? Dr. James Catteridge senior lecturer for MA in Film Studies, illustrates that the university has great relationship with its local cinema. Many Film Studies students have been employed by the cinema as volunteers. Both the current and the previous marketing manager are Brooks graduates. Simone Lancy, one of the postgraduate students who are currently working on this event, being enthusiastic in presenting this uh, event. It, it's definitely a good experience because maybe you start thinking, oh, I like this film, I want to show it, and I want to uh, share my passion with other people about what I feel about this film. 
but because you have to make a presentation to write a handout, hand, handout of the film, you can't just say, hello guys, I like Goodfellas, I'm gonna show Goodfellas, I like Goodfellas, so that's it. You, you need to, to, to give some interesting details about that, so that's always a challenge, a nice challenge because you need to make research and... However, how do undergraduate students who also study the same profession think about this event? And what can benefit them through this event? It sounds like a really creative and a good event mm. because if it's they are showing films that they have created, it's really nice for to get used to kind of the industry and the whole process of kind of screening a film that you made yourself. Get a look at. Yeah, it's just good to see from the people themselves like what they've been working on and how yeah. um, like how much they enjoy it, like how yeah. much uh, like they feel like it's really like helps them Isn't with what they want to do. Yeah, it's inspiring for you who is trying to decide kind of what you want to do. Despite the phenomenon of UK cinema admissions race during these few decades, some local cinemas may need more technicians and marketing experts. These events can strengthen the university to engage with local enterprises. Obviously it's a bit of a dying breed. Um, it's very difficult to be a local business and a local cinema so the more, the more that they can get the word out um, and the more students that are interested in it, and obviously Oxford is going to have a lot of students that are interested in the, what, they're, what they have to offer. Um, as long as they're able to get the word out and have events like this, I think it's, really good, it's just a really good idea. It is so important for film study student to participate with such events to gain priceless communication skills, especially practice what they have learned from the course and prepare for the future career. This is Caleb Young for Brooks TV. That's it for this half, but still to come. Will the cost of house prices ever decrease in Oxford? And Matt finds out what students really think about their experience at Oxford Brooks University. Welcome back to Brooks TV. We are now joined by Andrew Med, who will be talking to us about LGBT Month in Oxford Brooks. Thank you for being with us, Andrew. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you with us. Um, so, um, obviously, it's LGBT Month. Um, how is um, how is Brooks like getting involved in this, and what have we been doing as a university? Oh, we're actually doing fantastically at the moment. Um, it, it's a, a, a big formal push, a formal calendar event. We've been non-stop busy. Um, Everything from panels and debates to socials and and just and just a good old get together. We've launched um, bi and pan and trans um, groups amongst the students, and it's just been a general celebration of who we are and where we've come from. Lots of work with the staff networks and the university itself, especially the um, equality, diversity, and inclusion team. Okay, that's that's yeah, that's that's really good to hear that we've. We're moving on as a university and stuff. It is, and they're taking great steps to introduce um, a, a trans policy at the moment, which is fantastic. We've we've all consulted on it. They're being really receptive to what we've got to say, and we're making moves in the right direction. I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, because we've moved on quite a lot as a university from sort of where we were, um, why why is it sort of like important now and stuff? What what Things. What, why, why is it, and how's it being celebrated at Brooks um, as such? Well, I'd say uh, it's more, I wouldn't like to say popular, um, but yeah. <laughs> it's much more in the public eye now, and um, we've seen huge strides in the right direction in, in our lifetimes, and we need to keep them going, but for some people, it's not easy to be who you are, um, and it's about time that we made it inclusive for everyone, so you can be who you want to be at Brooks. And I think Brooks is working really hard to nurture that environment. Oh, that's, that, that, that's really good to hear. So obviously that's, it's, it's a real great support to have for a lot of those people who, are, um, who aren't, so who, who yeah, are going through this and absolutely need, yeah. need a lot of help. So um, 
But what are like the main issues exactly affecting the LGBT community at the moment? Um, I would say definitely for the student community, it's engagement. Uh, we've currently had a restructure of the LGBTQ plus society. Um, oh, right. Uh, we've been operating under a new system and it's working quite well. Our engagement has doubled, perhaps tripled since the start of the year. And we're putting on a lot more events with a lot more structure to them so that there's an equal amount of support um, and in, uh, support groups and social events. The staff network has been absolutely fantastic in helping us set all of this up. They support us and they put on events throughout the year. They work with different departments in the university, for example, the glass tank in Abercrombie. They do a lot of exhibits. Uh, they did one at the start this month for his LGBT History Month. And um, it's fantastic. We've, we've even had support from um, the staff unions. Um, and it, it's great. It's, it's an all hands on deck. A month really but it has been all year and it's it's great it's, um, to see it all come to fruition oh that's yeah that's that that's incredible especially when you've got like so many people working together for a common a common goal and stuff so what sort of um because obviously it's been lgbt months you must have had so much happening this yeah absolutely month. we've had uh weekly film screenings um i know the documentary society uh, screened born this way which is fantastic oh, wow. and it's it's great for us to stop we, as I said, we made great strides here, but we have to start thinking externally as well. And across the board, it's, it's not the same. People don't have the same privileges that we do. And they, they shouldn't be privileges, they should be rights. Um, but we've had a fantastic panel debate um, hosted by the Staff Network, which brought together activists and campaigners oh, to wow, talk that's, about intersectionalism. That's incredible. We're going to have to yeah. stop you right there. But no thank you, thank you, Andrew, for Thank you being very much for having me. Um, yeah. Uh, property prices in Oxford continue to surge, but what are the reasons and how does it affect us? Matthew Lau investigates. Higher price in the housing market. Lesser people can afford it. According to Home Tracks UK City's house price index issued recently on January, Oxford takes the lead with 9.2% growth rate quarterly than the other UK cities. Pat Chang, a resident of Oxford, who is aware the market explains well, uh, why. Apparently, it's been happening with this quite a lot. So, and I see in 2009 when I moved to Oxford, so I did look about the, I did look about the prices in here. I see it's cheap, still affordable because according to my salary. But now I think even had the same. I'm have, even my salary has increased, but I can't really afford it because it's the nearly about I would say about forty percent increase. But the time I till now it's like six years. So the house I need nearly about 43, 42 when I look at the same house again. So, it's a lot. This trend of the house price growth rate in Oxford was started from 2006. While the trend seems to be hard to cool down, what are the possible really reasons lying behind it? it? And on top, there's not much land for the city council to build a new home. So in particular, because there's the areas of the green belt or either because of the landscape of the Oxford they try to preserve. So that's a huge, diff uh, huge um, kind of burden for the people try to um, try to get the house to, to build on top of it. Um, so and I think there's two main points of it. Of course, there's also there's a high demand of people coming to work or also including students to uh, to study here. So I uh, think about it is all via because it's academic. Uh, well, also it's really famous for academic excellency. So they quite they try quite a lot of uh, students coming to study here. That kind of you know increase the demand you know of the house and also the flat people that want to stay in Oxford. Yeah. So how does it affect our students in Oxford? Yeah, now, who is a student currently studying at Brooks for the second year, have started looking for a flat to rent with her friends on December last year. It took us quite long because um, in Oxford, um, I know there's not enough, it's, it's not enough uh, place for students to live. So we really lucky, we, I think we spent a month or so and then we found, um, I think we found the advert on online and, uh, and also we saw the same property in the renting agency so um, so we confirmed this place by around March uh, by Easter so the rent is about 600 mm, excluding bills so it's two-third of my of my living costs yeah it's quite a big portion of my living costs as the house price in Oxford keeps increasing the home seekers seems to be even harder to find an ideal place to live in. No matter rent or buy, it remains a challenging problem to them for a certain period of time. 
This is Matthew Long from Books TV. It's time to find out what do Brooks students really think about their university. Hopefully it's only good things. Matthew Forbes finds out more. The NSS is an annual census of nearly half a million students across the UK. Conducted each year since 2005, it is an established survey that gives students a powerful voice to help shape the future of their course at their universities. The survey runs across all publicly funded higher education institutes in England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. The survey is aimed at final year undergraduates with the purpose of gathering feedback from all students at the end of their studies. Last year more than 7 out of every 10 students took the NSS and since the first survey nearly 3 million students have taken it. In 2016, Oxford Brooks had an overall satisfaction rating of 86%, putting it 60th in the overall satisfaction list. So I've come here to Brooks' Headington campus to find out what students really think about life at Brooks. Yeah, Brooks as a uni is great. Uh, it's an amazing building to be at uni at. Um, and all the admin stuff is really good. When you come in, you know exactly what you need and exactly what is expected of you. I think my experience at Brooks has been good. So far, I've done a four-year course with a year abroad, which I found really enjoyable. If there's one thing I could change about the courses, is that because I do a combined degree, it's quite often the, um, the courses can be quite muddled. There are lots of clashes, and some of the courses, I think, could be organised better. But other than that, I've had a great experience. Yeah, I think the new building has been a great um, add to Brooks. I think the library is useful. Um, the fact that that's expanded would be great if there was more seating. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think with the new building, obviously you have like a lot, like a lot more kind of food and stuff as well. So I guess the expansion of Brooks has been like a real help. Brooks is a great university. You see, a nice city, nice weather. Me, lots of new people. As I'm, I'm new to this university, so play some sports, meet some new guys. They're all nice, and uh, I find it quite easy to do my module, my course, I mean, it's, I have way less lessons per week than A-levels. So I have lots of free time, so I can kind of enjoy, enjoy myself. I think it's a really nice place, really nice buildings, and um, met lots of nice people, and um, yeah, it's pretty good. So there we have it, mostly positive reviews. Maybe this means that Brooks will fare better in this year's National Student Survey. I've been Matt Forbes for Brooks TV News. Now, let's take a look at the hipster hangout, the George Street Social. Who needs a pub quiz when the latest craze is retro gaming? Toby Ukaivo has more. Monday nights on George Street usually include drinks, classic video games and an undeniable nostalgic vibe. And it's all thanks to the George Street Social. Unlike most other pubs, the George Street Social dedicates every Sunday night to all of Oxford's classic games. Right, okay, we'll do a different map. We had a chat with Tom, the general manager, and the brains behind Retro Gaming Sundays. Uh, so, the Retro Gaming Night was my concept originally. Uh, it was um, it's something that we were thinking about for a while. Uh, we wanted to do something on a Sunday night that was quite chilled out uh, and relaxed and we felt, about, we felt like going for a bit of nostalgia. So we've been going for about six weeks now. It's been building up. We've been getting busier and busier each week. Um, and uh, we're, hoping, uh, we're hoping to keep growing it and make it a regular fixture. So I've been working here for a week now um, and really enjoyed it. It's very, it's like constantly busy. Um, mostly you get a lot of students in the end. It's my first Sunday night, yeah, the gaming night. Um, and yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of people that come. Um, everyone seems to enjoy it. Uh, and it's definitely something different because not that many other like bars do it or cafes, so. Cheap drinks, video games, and a very friendly atmosphere. Just some of the things you can find at the George Street Social Retro Gaming Sundays. With Brooks TV News, I'm Toby Ukai. Uh, if I can help it, I'm here every time. That's it for this week. Remember, you can view all of our previous episodes on the Oxford Brooks YouTube channel. See you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>